and Wagner. And we're live. I can see the numbers going up. Welcome, everybody, to a new session of Platform Engineers on Tour. Um, I am joining from Spain today. Uh, I don't know where everyone is everyone else is joining from, uh, but you can post in the you can post in the chat and let us know. Um, there you go. Somebody in Austin. I love Austin. Um, and uh, while we wait for people to roll in, um, just let's just give a, a couple more minutes. But um, um, just in the, the usual housekeeping rules, everybody. Uh, so the, ses the session will be recorded um, and we'll share it tomorrow per email. So no need to go crazy on taking notes or anything. Um, Simone and Federico will do a session for about 23 minutes uh, and then we'll open it up to questions. Uh, but if you have any questions throughout, uh, don't be shy. Feel free to just drop them into either the chat that people are using now or the Q&A. You can also use that and then we can queue them up. Um, and I will do the usual bit of shameless advertisement for Platform Con. Um, ah, oh, Portugal, nice. Um, I'll put the link here. Um, for those of you who missed it, we launched Platform Con in the last month or so. The conference will be on the 9th and 10th of June. So if you haven't registered yet, go check it out. And both Federico and Simone will actually host a talk there. Um, so hopefully we can also use this session as a way to give them feedback. Um, around the, uh, the, the topics that they're going to cover um, so that they can refine and fine tune the, the talks for, for platform con as well. Um, all right, with that said, um, I think we're good to go. Um, so Federico and Simone, thank you so much for doing this. Um, Federico and Simone are <clears throat> leading the team about water building their Kubernetes based internal developer platform. Um, they know a thing or two about platform. So I think it's going to be a really interesting sesh. Um, with that, uh, guys, over to you, and I'll shut up and disappear from the screen. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Federico. Uh, my name is Simone, and um, with Federico today, we will talk about how we migrated from the Amazon VPN CNI plugin uh, to Cilium. Um, my name is Simone Sharati. I am a team lead at Meltwater, and I am located in Gothenburg, Sweden, uh, just like Federico. Oh, we're in a, there you go. If you haven't heard about Meltwater, uh, we are a software as a service company and our mission is to help our customers better understand, influence and engage with their key stakeholders. Uh, here are a list of the services we provide and if you want to learn more about it, you can go to meltwater.com. Very well. So. Meltwater is a, is a global company with engineers all over the globe. Uh, we're about 300, more than 300 engineers and we're organizing autonomous teams. And these teams are responsible and to end for their applications. And our team as a platform team provides a few internal services, one of which is Kubernetes. And to give an idea of the scale of our clusters, the our main production cluster is used by 70 teams that deployed uh, more than 3,000 applications and some up to more than 12,000 pods. Uh, we provide about 10,000 cores, 24 terabytes of memory, and we offer different instance types uh, to accommodate different, different workloads. So memory intensive, CPU intensive, GPUs, all of that. And of course, just Kubernetes is not enough. So on top of that, we run the usual suspects, add-ons. We have the cluster out of scaler, so we don't have to worry about capacity. Uh, we have also observability, out of scaling, DNS, all of that. All things that our users rely upon. And uh, we managed our cluster in, uh, in Amazon in AWS with COPS, which is, um, which is a tool in the Kubernetes project. And when we started with Kubernetes, uh, we, the Amazon uh, VPN, VPC CNI plugin was the only one that uh, supported na native routing and that was our choice. So if that worked, why, why did we want to change? 
Um, generally speaking, we're always interested in, uh, in looking at new functionalities uh, provided to our users. For example, network policies uh, or better network observability. But specifically in this case, what triggered the work was a requirement to encrypt uh, all the network traffic between uh, the applications running in the cluster. And uh, why Cilium? Uh, we have been following Cilium for a long time, and it looked like a great choice for this use case because it promised to, to, do, uh, to enable encryption transparently so that all traffic would be encrypted without our users having to do any work at all. And another reason uh, is adoption. Uh, Cilium has been chosen as by many managed communities providers as the default CNI. And uh, it's also in use in many very large companies. So it looked like, uh, give us some confidence that it was a sound choice. It also has an active community and it recently joined the CNCF. So we wouldn't be alone if we run into any bump in the road. We also had our requirements. Uh, of course, it, it needed to be the migration. We wanted it to be absolutely seamless. Our users shouldn't notice anything. Uh, because of the way we manage the cluster with COPS, it needs to be uh, something that we can run in place. Uh, we can move all the workloads to another cluster. And we didn't want to have to, to change our tooling. So we still want to use COPS and we definitely didn't want to move away from native routing. Uh, and we don't want any of the components that our users rely upon to, to be affected during the migration. And also we want, of course, to, to be working as usual after. And as last requirement, we don't want to have to up upgrade Kubernetes in order to move to, to the new CNI plugin. So with this list, uh, we started small. Uh, we created a small production-like cluster and to learn how to run Cilium in a AWS CNI mode. We followed the documentation, which is, which is really good. And so we learned all the multiple configuration options. And once we had something running as intended, we, we also looked at the very good blog post about benchmarking and the tooling that is provided by, by Cilium. And we run our benchmarks uh, against uh, Cilium to compare Cilium and this, the current CNI plugin, the Amazon VPC CNI plugin in, with encryption on and off uh, to see that it would perform just as well. Um, and once we were satisfied uh, with the results that we got, uh, we looked at how we could combine Cilium with, with COPS, how we could manage one with the other. Um, with, uh, with the Amazon BBC CNI plugin, we was managed through COPS, um, but we decided to move away from that. Uh, we decided to manage Cilium uh, outside of COPS because this would allow us more flexibility uh, with the configuration options. Uh, not all the configuration options are exposed to COPS. And also we will not be tied to the version of COPS in order to change the version of, of Cilium. But in order to make this work, we had to push a small change uh, to COPS uh, and which was merged. So we luckily, so we don't have to, to maintain our own fork. And once all of this was done and we were ready with COPS, we, we looked into how the procedure of doing the migration. And now I'll hand over to Federica. Thank you. Yes, so we have prepared the migration. We learned how, um, how to uh, configure COP, um, Cilium and how to, how to use Cilium. And now it's time to um, find the, the, the way to, to, to do the replacement. Um, uh, we got inspired by a, a blog post where um, Sky switched over from uh, Flannel and Calico to, to Cilium, and they were also doing a live migration. And by from reading the, um, the blog post, um, we then thought, okay, this should be possible and should be even easier to migrate from uh, the, the Amazon CNI to, to Cilium as both of uh, CNI plugins are using uh, native VPC IPs and doing the native routing. So our main idea was that if one pod lives on one node, that node is then taking care of either CNI, either the Amazon one or the, the Cilium one. So pod on uh, the pod on, on a node with the Amazon would get the IP from the Amazon CNI and the pod on a node that is managed by Cilium would get the, the IP from 
the, the Cilium CNI. And both the Amazon CNI and the Cilium CNI would then ask Amazon for these IPs. So there would no be uh, a, a double uh, assignment of IPs like that. Um, this also allowed us to, to plan for a multiple day rollout uh, since the, um, we had these large workloads there um, and from previous um, upgrades and other migrations, we already knew that this would probably take two or three days. And um, being able to run both CNI plugins at the same time also gave us a confident um, to, to be able to do this. Um, so how did we do this uh, in, in, in detail? Um, we started with the, um, with the cluster and where the nodes and the masters were managed by the Amazon CNI um, to uh, have this configuration stay. And anytime we add new nodes, we want them to be able to steer which CNI is managing those. Um, we added a configuration change to the uh, to the Amazon CNI to only run on certain nodes, and those certain nodes were labeled with the CNI plugin AWS. With this, we ensured that these nodes were taken care of um, the Amazon CNI plugin. What we then did um, was to uh, launch the um, Cilium operator. Um, since there were no Cilium nodes, it was um, uh, pending. And once we added the first Cilium node to the cluster and um, the Cilium daemon set was configured to not run on any nodes that were configured with the Amazon CNI plugin, we could add uh, new nodes to it. They were then taken, uh, picked up by the Cilium CNI plugin, the Cilium operator launched, and then everything was, um, was ready to, to continue. What we then uh, planned and did was to migrate the uh, master nodes to Cilium as well, so that we knew that um, the control plane was was ready and migrated. And with this, we had the um, control plane in Cilium, we had the old nodes with the Amazon CNI plugin, and then we had new nodes uh, being picked up by the by the Cilium plugin. And then that's what we did then. We added new nodes, they were picked up by the Cilium uh, CNI plugin, and then we drained old nodes and the workloads migrated to the, to the, uh, new, to the new nodes with the uh, Cilium CNI plugin. Um, this turned out to, to work flawlessly. Um, the only thing we had to do was to, uh, as I said uh, previously, um, configure the Amazon CNI plugin to stay on certain nodes and then configure the, the Cilium CNI plugin to just run on the nodes that are not uh, taken care of by the, the Amazon CNI plugin. Um, the migration, when I said we drained uh, nodes, the old, uh, the workloads from the old nodes towards the two uh, new nodes, we used um, or took uh, advantage of the cluster autoscaler um, to, to spin up new nodes as they were needed. We, we drained an old node, the, the pods migrated to a new node. If a new node was needed, um, the cluster autoscaler would spin up a new node, Cilium would run on that node, and then the workload would, uh, would end up on, on that node. And to, to, uh, to help the cluster autoscaler and make this process a little bit uh, uh, faster, we over provisioned the cluster with some low priority pods that kept basically empty nodes uh, warm, uh, two or three per availability zone. And as soon as real workloads migrated to those nodes, the um, low priority over provisioning pods would then trigger the cluster autoscaler to, to uh, start a new instance, which would then just become ready after two or three minutes. And with that, we always had some warm nodes ready, which made the migration even faster. And uh, pods that had to be migrated would not be in a pending state for, for too long. And once this was done, um, the end state would have been then a cluster where the control plane is on Cilium and all new nodes are on Cilium. When we reach this, we can then just uh, happily uh, delete the uh, daemon set for the Amazon CNI plugin. 
Um, we prepared the rollout. We had this procedure. Uh, we did not want to do this manually. So um, we codified the entire procedure, all the commands to spin up, label the nodes, uh, spin up the corresponding uh, daemon sets, uh, patch the old daemon set, do the configuration changes. And with that, we could then run um, a, a couple of uh, tests where we uh, would spin up test clusters about the same size as uh, the production clusters. And we then uh, just practice the, uh, the migration to uh, gain confidence that this will, will work. At the same time, we also uh, started to inform our users on the cluster that this will happen and how we will migrate from one plugin to the other plugin um, to give uh, the users confidence that this will be a, a seamless, seamless procedure that we have uh, aimed for and uh, usually do. Um, yeah. Before we migrated uh, the, the, uh, the real important clusters, we uh, dog fooded the solution on an internal facing uh, production cluster where there is no external customers affected if something should go wrong. Um, this cluster is still uh, quite important as it's used by um, engineers internally for their day-to-day um, -day work. Um, it's a controlled, as I said, there were no external customers being affected by it. It's still a production workload. Um, during that migration, we discovered that we had uh, some small connectivity issues for some ports sometimes. And um, to discover that, we wrote our own test tooling uh, called Bravo Pinger. What Bravo Pinger does is basically saturates the node with uh, pods on every ENI, on every uh, possible IP, and does some connectivity tests. We had previously used the uh, Cilium connectivity test that they have, which works very nicely. But this here is an edge case on, on Amazon that we discovered with this, that pods on the secondary ENI getting an IP from the secondary in I could not talk to any external uh, internet address. And uh, in the end, we discovered that we had missed the um, egress masquerade interface configuration flag. Um, this was on this internal production cluster, um, which was good. With this, we then uh, discovered that we need to, to add this flag to our um, configuration before the, doing the, the, the real migrations. Um, we had this then running for uh, a couple of uh, weeks to, to see if this is stable and uh, works as intended. And uh, once the, the time was ready, we then uh, did the, the migration as planned. Uh, we changed the configuration of the Amazon CNI plugin. We added Cilium to it. We drained the old nodes. The workloads moved to the new Cilium nodes. Um, it took three days as uh, we had uh, thought it would take. Uh, we would start in the morning. We would uh, drain and migrate from old nodes to, to, to the new nodes until we, we called it a day and then we continued uh, the, the next day. And then during the uh, nights and evenings, we uh, let the uh, the cluster stay in the state it was with both both CNI plugins and um, that worked without any problems. So with this, we also avoided long days and night shifts. Um, after the, during this migration, we in, nevertheless uh, encountered two small hiccups that was that um, the resource request from the daemon sets or the re uh, resource usage from daemon sets on nodes increased slightly, which then prevented some workloads that had really uh, tied uh, or were using almost everything from, from certain nodes or resources from certain nodes um, could not start. 
um, we talked to the teams, they lowered their resource requests, and then those workloads could also start on those nodes where the daemon sets were using uh, some more of the resources than previously. Um, another uh, bump that we uh, encountered were instances with lower IP limits. Um, Simona said that we had uh, inst we have instance groups with nine different instance types. Those instance types don't have the same uh, capability with regards to ENIs and uh, IP limits. Still, we wanted to have the same configuration overall, which meant that um, in the end, to overcome the small road bump, we um, uh, launched larger instances that had the same IP uh, capabilities and ENI capabilities as um, the, the rest of the instance uh, types that we're using. This affected one, one, one instance type. We, we missed this. In, in the weeks and months of, of, of testing, we, we, we missed just this um, instance group that is uh, using GPU instances that they have a lower IP, ENI and IP limits. After that, the three days, everything was fine. We had migrated the uh, the, the the 400 nodes. Selenium was running okay, um, and uh, we celebrated and uh, called it the weekend, though it was Thursday. Um, yeah, everything was working fine. The migration uh, went as we had planned and practiced beforehand. And uh, we went in the weekend, and then when we came back on on Monday, uh, some problems started to 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 appear. After a couple of these days, four days uh, after the migration has finished, um, we were uh, advised by teams that some of their pods and some of their workloads had intermittent connectivity issues. Uh, we started to look into that. And uh, in the beginning, we thought it was DNS. Um, the uh, error messages were uh, contained a lot of the get address info in not found error messages. Um, and it's always DNS, isn't it? Um, in this case, it uh, was not DNS. DNS was a symptom, but it was not the, 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 the problem. Um, Digging further into this, we then thought um, from the logs and going further into, into debugging mode, it has to be the Amazon uh, EC2 limits um, that the Amazon has on, on bandwidth allowance and, and, and contract allowance, um, that we were exceeding something there. Um, it was visible that some of those counters were uh, past the, 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 the Amazon limits. Um, in the end, it was not that either. Um, we discovered that some of the issues that we were experiencing, the connectivity issues, um, disappeared when we restarted Cilium and they came back after some time. So we um, we were looking uh, then in, into Cilium. And, and, and to debug Cilium, they are the, the, the great, uh, they're great tools. They have Hubble. Um, they have Cilium system built into the uh, Cilium CLI to collect a lot of information from the nodes, um, state of the Cilium CNI plugin, but also state of the network configuration that is happening on on the nodes um, itself. Um, and with the Cilium system, we then, after a couple of weeks of testing and debugging issues, um, and there were, um, let's say the situation was stable. We know how to, to uh, work with, with those connectivity issues, but we also started to learn more and more where to look for, for uh, the problem. And with the Cilium system, in the end, we then discovered a um, 
routing misconfiguration where a pod would get two conflicting routes, um, sending um, the packets through both um, network interfaces, even though it would have more than one network interface. Um, this causes problems on Amazon as it would drop the packet. Um, knowing this, we then started to look into, into the code and we actually uh, then, um, after adding a lot of debugging statements and uh, understanding the, the learning how the, um, the flow in, in, in the CNI plugin works, we then uh, discovered the, um, the part of the code that we think um, caused our problems. Um, we have so far now uh, prepared a uh, proof of concept to fix this and uh, are going to uh, to submit this back to, to the Cilium uh, project and uh, to see if this is something that is um, a real problem or if we have misunderstood it. But as we see it with this fix that we have provided our problems, um, we could not reproduce our problems anymore. So I think this is a valuable PR, will be a valuable PR for a future version of of uh, of Cilium. Um, yeah, so far we have um, are still using Cilium. We have not switched back though of the initial um, problems that we got after the migration. Uh, they are stable now. We understood where the problems are and we're going to provide this back to the community. Um, the journey that we went into migration started with learning Cilium, see how we can use Cilium with our um, cluster provisioning tools, and then even digging deeper into 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 the Cilium functionality and uh, in, in, and the code. And uh, with that, we want to thank you for for listening. Um, you can reach out. To, uh, via these addresses to us. And the um, GitHub uh, Meltwater re Engineering Public Presentation Repository will contain the um, PDF of this presentation. And I think also uh, Luca is going to mail this out later today or tomorrow. And with that, we are open for questions. Indeed, we will follow up. Thank you so much, guys. That was great. Um, yeah, we actually already have a couple of questions queued up. So let's start with the first one. Richard, uh, was there a reason to pick uh, KOps over any other tool? Um, I can answer. At the time that we chose, the, we were looking into the tooling. Uh, there wasn't really that much. Uh, we, I think we did uh, an evaluation of the different tooling and KOps was the, the most actively supported uh, and the one that provided uh, the best user experience from our point of view. Uh, so, at, and since then there's been an inflection at some point we felt that it wasn't, um, development of the tool was slowing down and it wasn't really catching up with, uh, with new releases of Kubernetes, but since a couple of years, the development is going really, really quick, swiftly and, uh, and we're really happy with that. Yes, um, we should also add that uh, we started to use COPS uh, early 2018, late 2017, and that was um, before there was even EKS. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. um, Shira is asking, were there any downsides of migrating to Cilium from AWS VPC CNI? And did you consider chaining the AWS CNI to the Cilium CNI? Um, regarding the chaining, um, we only considered it slightly. We thought of um, that it would add complexity because at some point you then need to maintain and understand two CNI plugins, even if you just use them for different parts. The, C the Amazon one would still do the, the IPs and then the Cilium one would do all the other added on functionality. And uh, we we thought that it would be too too complex having two of those, and it would also prevent us from uh, using functionality that does not work in in in, in chaining mode. 
And to be honest, we also had encountered a few years ago some problems and bugs in the Amazon CNI plugin. And then we said, if we have to deal with bugs, we only want to deal at some point and one in one in one place. Um, I think I can add to that too, that the, the Cilium CNI plugin with the use of the operator has a, has a more efficient way to, to interact with the Amazon API. And so that was an advantage. If we had gone for chaining, then we wouldn't be able to reap the benefit of it. Fair enough. Um, all right, um, we can wait for a couple more minutes um, for if you guys have any more questions, feel free to drop them in either the chat or the Q&A. Um, I'm curious, guys, what are you thinking of, about exploring at the platform con talk on top of on top of what you discussed today is there like a specific uh direction that you want to dive into or or how do you how are you thinking about it you mean for our talk or generally as as participants in the for your talks for your talks um i would really like to know what's the feedback would people know more about one you know more code, more other reasons, uh, uh, other things that you would want to hear. Um, that would be, I think that that's the feedback that we, we're looking for to, you know, in order to drive in a specific direction. Absolutely. And um, hopefully people will drop it here in the chat. Otherwise, uh, there's always the, um, I always remind people of this, let me drop it in here. Does the platform engineering Slack channel uh, where we also have this type of uh, follow-up conversation. So feel free to go in there and uh, and follow up on this too. I'll, I'll, I'll pop in the link in here. Um, Shear is asking, are there any functionalities that were lost when migrating to Cilic? Don't think so. I can't think of anything. Uh, no. I think that uh, we we get. Um, I mean, on top of the basic functionality, we also get better uh, observability of the components itself and better logging. Uh, so overall, like I cannot actually think of a single. No, we have we have better metrics as well. So the operator, we have a better interaction with um, the Amazon API, rather than every node having to talk to the Amazon API and requesting um, IPs. This is now uh, happening centrally through the through the operator, which um, reduces the, the number of calls and uh, rate limiting issues. Um, we get the same the same functionality as before we have native ips from the from the vpc we can um, control and also the allocation the number of ips that we pre-allocate to a node and and, and these were basically what we had um, configured the amazon cni with other than the standard is to um, reduce pre-allocation of uh, of enis and ips and we can do that with Cilium as well. Sounds like a successful migration to me. Um, so Mark is asking, did you find any other people with the same connectivity issues you've experienced with Cilium? Um, I would say not, not exactly the same, but there's been, uh, we've been keeping an eye on, uh, on um, issues in, in the Cilium project. And also we engage with uh, in Slack. Uh, so if you want to directly interact with us, you can also find us on the Cilium, uh, Cilium Slack. Um, there's a, a, a lot of these issues were very similar and we try to reach out, but nothing that is exactly the same. Um, yep. there's, there's, for example, Datadog um, published a blog post on, on an issue that um, cost them some, some gray hair now last week. And it's similar, but not the same. And it's edge cases um, involving uh, a certain uh, 
provider, cloud provider, and perhaps also a certain configuration. Um, all right. Well, so currently no he's asking uh, what more you want to dive into apart from con, I guess we <laughs> sort of answer that. But um, Richard, um, other than native encryption, were there any other advantages of Cilium over Calico? I think we looked uh, we looked a bit at the benchmarking, uh, and that looked uh, to be more performant. Uh, I don't really know all of the features of Calico, so I can't really no. talk about that. But um, yeah, I think benchmarking was that what what we saw. That's the the benchmarking, but and then also for us, um, a, a, a factor was, as Simone mentioned, the um, Cilium being a project of the CNCF, which gives you certain guarantees uh, in terms of uh, life cycle for the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And we did have, by the way, a section with uh, a session with Chris Tompkins. Yeah, Chris Tompkins from uh, from Tegera and Calico. So if you guys want to go check it out, make sure to include that link as well in the follow up email. Um, all right. Looks like all right, Richard makes sense for sure Beats Enterprise licensing. Thanks. All right. Um, it looks like we got all the questions in. Um, unfortunately, not too much feedback for you guys. So uh, hopefully, hopefully people will share some in the. Thank you, share. Um, we'll we'll share some in the in the Slack channel or you know in the in an email afterwards. So I'll make sure to share it with you as well. Uh, but thank you so much, Federico and Simona. Uh, it's great having you both. And um, yeah, see you apart from Colin. Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Have a good bye -bye. evening. Bye-bye.